Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maria Clara, and it's an immense honor to welcome you to the opening ceremony of our NT2E and for the much anticipated award ceremony to honor the winners of the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit. NT2E Nuclear Technology and Trade Exchange started last year as an unprecedented initiative in Brazil to boost the production chain of our sector. We gathered all the main companies, officials, and researchers in the Brazilian and global nuclear sector. Of course, we would like to have met in person, shake hands, speak eye to eye, but as we all know, 2020 was the time to reinvent how we do business, strengthen relationships, and even change the most traditional of events. Therefore, today we are here in a studio respecting all the social distancing and COVID-19 prevention measures so that even in such a unique event, we can continue delivering high-value content to our partners and associates. Our thoughts and prayers also go out to the families of the more than 160,000 COVID-19 victims in Brazil. It is with heavy hearts that we face this time, but we will prevail united and strong. Today, we will begin a series of panel discussions with a series of the biggest names in the global nuclear sector to talk about the development of the nuclear industry. None of this would be possible without the support of our sponsors who believed in this program and reaffirmed their commitment to continue developing the sector. Special thanks to our companies, Electronuclear, Nuclep, Frematom, Westinghouse, Technotom, and Cyclobras. I invite you to get to know a little bit more about our master sponsor. It's through these companies and it's for these companies that the Brazil Association for the Development of Nuclear Activities, ABDEN, develops important forums for debate year after year. In order to officially kick off the NT2E, I give the floor to the president of ABDEN, Celso Cunha. Hello, Maria Clara. How are you? Doing well? Doing well, yes. Hello, everyone. Well, good afternoon to you all. Minister of Mines and Energy, Bento Albuquerque, Admiral Admiral Andre Macedo of the Office for Institutional Security, Executive Secretary of the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation, Major Brigadier Leonidas de Araujo Medeiros, representing Minister Marcos Ponte, Squadron Admiral Marcus Sampaio Olsen, representing the Navy Commander Lucas de Barbosa Jr. Well, last year we had a few key words and so we thought, what would be the key word for 2020? If we had to narrow it down to one word, I would say it was synergy. Synergy, if we look in the dictionary, especially when we talk about business synergy, it is when work is done together to accomplish a certain task. And it's done with several different partners. They work together for a common good. And the people involved to work together for a specific objective, cooperation, cohesion, union, solidarity, association, participation, collaboration, understanding, and support. And all of these are synonyms of this word. If we seek together with our stakeholders over the years, this synergy between us, various actors within the nuclear sector, the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Institutional Security Office, the Brazilian Navy, the Ministry of Agriculture, SIBRAI, APEX, 
the International Atomic Energy Agency, World Nuclear Association, business associations and public utility companies, universities and private companies. It would be very important to join this all together and create a business environment, an environment for business where we act to seek a solution, a solution made up of several factors that make an impact on people's lives. This is important in several ways to contribute as a long-term and well-established program All of this is fundamental. We create clusters, technological routes for the nuclear sector, and a policy for for promoting this productive chain. Taking sure steps for this sector is very important. Increased independence from foreign supply and an increased number of suppliers is fundamental particularly in this situation with COVID, where it's very difficult to travel and make shipments, including micro and small-sized businesses, as well as mid-sized businesses, is fundamental for the nuclear sector and for the country. Encouraging the use of technological resources is part of the new legal framework for innovation, and this is fundamental. The funding is there. We need to promote research and development and the training of professionals and to reform the nuclear regulatory system. This is all part of building a healthy and lasting business environment, which is what we need. Speaking of a strong and agile regulation and supervision, the signal we got from the government regarding the creation of a nuclear authority, which is an issue discussed since 2008, has been advancing, and we are eagerly waiting for this issue to be settled by 2020. We end up with a review of the rules set out by Anvisa and Senen for nuclear medicine in a congressional bill held up in Congress for breaking up the monopoly on radio pharmaceuticals. This will allow the population to have access to medicine that is fundamental for treating things like cancer and treatments of all sorts of kinds. We also can't forget the breakup of the uranium mining monopoly that will bring more agility and independence to the production of nuclear fuel. Brazil has the ninth largest amounts of mineral reserves in the world. We need to make the most of this. We ought to take this opportunity to congratulate the entire team from the Ministry of Mines and Energy for their major victory in restarting operations at the Caetete mine in Bahia, which has been shuttered since 2015. The measures taken to make such mining possible are also being applied to the operations at the Santa Quiteria mine in Sierra. This comes at a cost, but it will take time. But this mine, a uranium phosphate mine, will receive an investment of $350 million over time. This is fundamental for our country. Freeing up funding for expanded fuel production at the plant today will ensure a steady supply of ANGRA units 1, 2, and 3. And speaking of ANGRA 3, its construction work had to wait to restart. Electrobras and Electronuclear have been making efforts to free up funding for the plan to ramp up the critical plan, keeping the target for the plant's inauguration at 2026-2027. BNDES has been working on the process of implementing the economic feasibility model for the conclusion of the plant's operations. Nuclep is the Brazilian company responsible for manufacturing the nuclear equipment installed at Angra Units 1, 2, and 3. It has been building and making opportunities and business to make the most of its manufacturing capacity and expertise. The conclusion of Angra 3 will be a great milestone that will effectively unlock the nuclear sector. 
And speaking about the future, we must remember that last year we launched the 2029 10-year energy plan. It was seen by the market as a major sign uh, for the nuclear sector, considering that its box 3.5 spoke about paving the way for expanding the thermonuclear generation. However, the COVID-19 pandemic came and very important work was re- was delayed as a result, such as defining sites for new nuclear power plants. We need to move forward with this work. We hope that the 2030 deadline that is under discussion will continue to reflect the evolution of this work, because in 2030, we will already be at one-third of the way to the 2050 National Energy Plan, called the PNE 2050. In this plan, we also see a major step forward for the nuclear sector, which also shows a major step forward for the nuclear sector, since it says that we will be creating 8 to 10 gigawatts of nuclear generation. We looked at keywords last year called machines ahead, but we need to put more turbocharge into those machines. Our processes are still very fragile. Modernizing the nuclear site licensing process, aiming at site licensing regardless of the project to be adopted, is fundamental. Working on the set of technical specifications for the plants to be built in Brazil, defining the business model, updating the regulatory framework, defining the competitive mechanism for the entry of nuclear generation. All of this is presuming uranium prospecting throughout Brazil and following technology development and its applications And speaking of technological innovation, we can't fail to mention the discussion of the nuclear propulsion submarine. Progress on this project has been overseen by Admiral Marcus Olson and Vice Admiral Noriak. Project allows Brazil to have its first small reactor ever. This type of project and technology not only will speed up the licensing processes, but it will also help to serve areas of Brazil that are more remote, such as Amapá, which is right now experiencing a very difficult situation. One of the good things about nuclear energy at this type of source is that this source can be closer to the centers uh, that use this energy. We can put it closer to the cities. And this way, we can reduce the impact of building large transmission lines over long areas. Nuclear generation, amongst many of its attributes, has the possibility of being built close to population centers and in small areas. Not to mention the fact that it has clean energy. We can't help but talk a little bit about health and food. Currently, it is estimated that 30% of everything that's produced in food is lost. That's a lot of loss. And several markets, they don't accept our products without them being irradiated. Why? Because irradiation helps to control, prolong the shelf lives of those products. Amazul has been trying to implement irradiation centers to use this nuclear technology. And that way they can use it in food, cosmetics, medical supplies, and other industrial applications. We are also in the midst of building a project that has been around since 2008, which is the RMB, the Multipurpose Reactor, And several different institutions have been positioning themselves to conclude this project. But we need funding to make it happen. Without that, uh, we're not going to be able to make progress. This project will have a major impact in nuclear medicine. ABDEN is very proud of being here developing the nuclear sector. And as a show of our 
dedication and the consolidation of our actions that have been taken, Abdan, together with its partners, welcomes all of you to participate in our event, the 2020 Nuclear Technology Trade and Exchange and the 2020 World Nuclear University on November 10, 12, 17, and 19. We are Abdan. Join us. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Celso. And thank you for your illuminating points. Now I can officially say that we have kicked off NT2E. 2020 has entered the history books because of COVID-19, which forced us all to stay indoors, isolated, changing even the simplest of social dynamics. But even with a pandemic, the world does not stop turning. The economic crisis brought about by the novel coronavirus has made countries all over the world to recognize the need to boost the economy, create jobs while meeting the global goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And this is when the nuclear industry stands out. It is impossible to imagine a future with energy security, with low carbon emissions, without a significant share of nuclear in the power grid. Brazil is no stranger to this movement, and the industry is once again excited about the outlook for the coming years. In addition to returning to work at Angra Unit 3, slated for 2021, the National Energy Plan, PNE 2050, foresees adding between 8 and 10 gigawatts worth of new nuclear power plants next three decades, which would mean constructing up to eight new plants in this period. In light of the new outlook for new business and progress in the Brazilian nuclear industry over the next several years, today we are meeting virtually with several figures and institutions that are of utmost importance to our sector. Our first guest to participate is Minister of Mines and Energy, Ben Albuquerque. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. It is a great satisfaction to be able to participate in this awarding ceremony for the Medal of Honor of Nuclear Merit and the opening of the international event, World Nuclear University, promoted by ABDEN and the World Nuclear Association. I would like to congratulate the president of ABDEN, engineer Celso Cunha, for his message at the opening of this event, as well as his organization. I'd also like to greet our, my colleagues, the Admiral Marco Sampaio Olsen, General Director of Nuclear and Technological Development of the Navy, and Leonidas Daujo, Executive Secretary of the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovations, and the Counter Admiral Andre Macedo of the Institutional Security Office, on behalf of whom I greet everyone who is assisting us. In this process of resuming the Brazilian nuclear program, I must emphasize the importance of awarding our distinguished colleagues, public personalities, with the Medal of Nuclear Merit in recognition of their contribution to the development of the nuclear sector in Brazil in the fields of research, agriculture, industry, medicine, electric power generation, sterilization of equipment, preservation of the environment, and even conservation of art objects and literary works. I must also highlight the relevant contribution of ABDAN and of the WNA for promoting this international event in Brazil, known as the World Nuclear University, which offers an exclusive training program for the development of state-of-the-art skills around the world. As I have already mentioned in other forums, the development of our National Energy Plan for 2050 currently in its final phase of being updated for the incorporation of the effects of the crisis caused by the pandemic, will recommend the expansion of nuclear generation by 10 gigawatts in 30 years. Another point to be highlighted is the development of the policy to encourage the creation of a nuclear cluster with the help of the Brazilian Navy and other ministries 
that are also working in this sector to create a productive chain with private companies and institutions. Increasing the share of nuclear energy on our energy grid will position Brazil as a relevant international party in this restricted market. On the other hand, we must also improve our legislation in order to attract private investment in our sector, including in the mining sector for uranium. In this sense, we should encourage geological research to expand the knowledge of radioactive minerals in our land. In this way, the people will have better conditions for research, including biosciences and nuclear medicine. Another important action that's underway is the progress in the necessary adjustments to update the legal framework for nuclear activity and the nuclear regulatory action linked to the Ministry of Mines and Energy. By the end of 2021, we are preparing to resume studies to locate new nuclear sites. The first, second, and third phases of identifying potential sites and candidate sites is underway. A part has already been carried out by Nuclear in partnership with COP and the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, where Brazil was mapped according to the Electric Power Research Institute's Siting Guide, which establishes strict criteria developed by the EPRI. But we have to advance our goals in intensifying these studies so that we have an ability to identify preferred sites that allows the government to propose these implementation of new nuclear power plants to the National Congress. And we think that this would be important for the security of our electric energy system in Brazil. Finally, I would like to congratulate the recipients and thank ABDAN and WNA, the organizers of this seminar, for their initiative in creating this webinar in the middle of this pandemic and for the importance in continuing over the next few days where we will have the seminar for developing and training our new professionals. I take advantage of this moment to greet all of you. Thank you to everyone in this program and good afternoon. Thank you, Minister of Mining and Energy, Bento Albuquerque. And now let's go on to one of our sponsors. Good afternoon. I am Carlos Seixas, the president of NUCLEP. NUCLEP is a company that was founded in 1975 and inaugurated in 1980. NUCLEP was built within the Brazilian nuclear program. We currently operate ANGRA Unit 1, ANGRA Unit 2, and ANGRA Unit 3, whose equipment was produced by NUCLEP. The equipment is ready. We just have to deliver the condensers and some accumulators, but they are already built and by Nuclep, and now they're in the final testing stage. So our company participated in building the Angra nuclear plants and is qualified for building any nuclear power plant or equipment. Nuclep is a strategic defense company. The strategic aspect is the nuclear power plant. We are also very interested in the Brazilian multi-purpose reactor, also known as RMB, which we expect to break ground very soon. 
Since Nuclep is the only company in Brazil that is licensed and qualified for building nuclear equipment and plants in Brazil, with our equipment and our highly specialized labor force in the nuclear field, our staff and engineers, many of whom have been trained in Germany and in France, Today, our company is one of the most qualified companies in the nuclear field in Brazil, and dare I say, in the Southern Hemisphere. Within the strategic defense aspect of our company, we have a very strong and long-standing relationship with the Brazilian Navy. Together, we are building the nuclear submarine. Right now, the Technological Research Center in Sao Paulo is developing this nuclear program, and it involves LabGen, which is the nuclear electric laboratory that will place a one-to-one scale submarine prototype at Aramar. This will be the future nuclear submarine in Brazil. We have already created the reactor vessel at LabGen in Sao Paulo, and right now, Nuclep is working on building Block 40. Block 40 is the submarine section where the nuclear reactor will be housed. So, Nuclep can be considered a strategic defense company with unparalleled equipment that in Brazil, we are the only ones to have. And most importantly, we have very highly specialized staff trained in Brazil and abroad. Thank you. Nuclear activity in Brazil depends directly on the participation of the national government since it is the union's responsibility to legislate on this matter, to exploit nuclear services and facilities, and exercise state monopoly on research, mining, re- enrichment, and reprocessing, industrialization, and trade in nuclear ore and its derivatives as indicated in the federal constitution. The Institutional Security Office is fundamental for the development of nuclear activities in Brazil, and this year created a working group for communication in the nuclear sector, collaborated on studies on the use of nuclear technology, to provide more health and phytosanitary security to Brazilian products and increasing the shelf lives of food and fruits besides supervising activities such as the partial emergency response and nuclear physical security exercise held out held every two years at Angra dos Reis. And here to represent the Office of Institutional Security, Abden is proud to welcome Admiral André Macedo. We had a problem with our connection with Admiral Macedo. Let's wait a little until he comes back online. Let's see if we can reconnect with him. Well, I'm sure he'll be right here with us very soon. But uh, uh, for right now, I think we will check in with one of our sponsors. This is for you. You who see how essential electricity is to people's lives every day. You who understand how we must reduce our CO2 emissions now. You who know that nuclear energy is a powerful source of low carbon electricity. It is also an industry that demands unparalleled levels of safety and security. Yes, this is for you. You who know that for over 60 years, we have been designing and building nuclear steam supply systems, We have been developing and manufacturing components and fuel assemblies for all the major electrical utilities in the world. We have been delivering the heavy and mobile components needed for the nuclear island, as well as the instrumentation and control solutions. That we provide the maintenance and engineering services for more than 250 nuclear reactors around the world. 
and that we are participating in the construction of new reactors in France, China, Finland, and the United Kingdom. So yes, this is all for you. You who trust in the expertise, the experience, and the commitment of our 14,000 employees. Whether you be an electrical utility customer, engineer, new graduate, or simply a consumer of energy anywhere in the world, this film is for you, for each and every one of you, because you believe in nuclear energy, because you trust Framatom, because every day we are committed to serving our customers and working for energy that is competitive, reliable, and safe. The Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation is fundamental to encourage national scientific research and development. The portfolio is directly related to projects beyond a nuclear power generation as a Brazilian multipurpose reactor that will ensure self-sufficiency in the production of radiopharmaceuticals used in Brazilian nuclear medicine. Research on radiotherapy, irradiation of food, radio sterilization, among other applications of nuclear technology. To talk more about the role of the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation, we invite the Executive Secretary of the Major Brigadier, Leonidas de Araujo, Jr. Good afternoon to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and represent our Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation, and to greet Admiral Olson and Admiral Hilkes, who is being uh, honored, as well as Celso Cunha, who made a very good presentation, as well as Patricia Weiland, and to greet everyone and congratulate Abdian for this time, for this opportunity, this award that I am talking about here. For this reason, I would like to talk about peaceful uses of nuclear energy, which is recognized as strategic by the international community. And in this sense, we can talk about Brazil and its ways of using these initiatives and its vectors. In this vast theme, the search for technological development at the top leads Brazil to the structuring of nuclear sector, which involves not only science, technology, and the application of nuclear techniques headed by the CNEN, but also the industry through the Ministry of Mines and Energy and Defense Systems through the organization and guidance of the Ministry of Defense and our Brazilian Navy. In the context of national governance, which is responsible for the formulation of Brazilian nuclear policy, through Law 13,844, Article 26 Alpha, in this field, we are in the process of reviewing the competencies of the Nuclear Energy Commission that considers all of the national authority for nuclear safety as to the subsequent innovation of security and the CNEN's work in the technological development and research, as well as innovation and technology transfer, applications of nuclear techniques, management of radioactive waste, radiological protection, dosimetry, and metrology of the unit's radiations, emergency response, and specialized information for the nuclear sector. Brazil has a solid and comprehensive tradition and technical competence in this field. And as a result, CNEN which is under our ministry, has been the central institution for these matters for over 60 years. Peaceful uses of nuclear energy, as I've already mentioned, while its presence in various economic sectors is noticed as a contribution to the promotion of social and economic development in our country, you can see that we have the applications of nuclear technology in the areas of human health, diagnosis and treatment, as well as the protection of the environment, amongst others, as have been mentioned and discussed. Brazil ranks fifth in the world in number of research nuclear reactors and also has 
cyclotron accelerators, as well as electron accelerators, gamma radiators, and nuclear technology to r- laboratories and technical scientific units that are part of our CNEN. And through this robust infrastructure, we provide goods and services to Brazilian society in addition to training specialized staff for the nuclear sector and related sectors. The most remarkable national scientific and technical scientific advances in the various fields of the application of nuclear technology, while this is taken to the reputation of the country in international forums, and as a special highlight at the IAEA, besides being politically and diplomatically up to date in strengthening the balanced service of this agency, such as the dissemination of the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, radiological protection, as we have just mentioned, and nuclear nonproliferation, Brazil makes an outstanding technical contribution in the most diverse areas of work of that organization. In this wide range of international activities, CNEN, due to the singularity of its competencies, has been important for technical assistance and coordination and the implementation of commitments assumed by the country. And in that sense, We do everything we can with technical assistance and coordination for the implementation of these different things in the country through the Ministry of Science and Technological Innovation. The promotion of education and training are fundamental for guaranteeing the fulfillment of national goals in the nuclear area. In this regard, Brazil actively participates in international technological cooperation mechanisms notably those coordinated by the IAEA, which has capacity building as one of its main anchors. In addition to being the beneficiary of such mechanisms, the inclusion of Brazilian institutions in these agendas is also a national concern. I would like to once again... Congratulate ABDEN for the initiative of highlighting national organizations for promoting the Nuclear Merit Medal and for the organization of the course debate on key topics of interest for the scientific area in the nuclear field. Finally, to all those awarded the Medal of Honor, I'd like to extend my congratulations to WNA and WNU. Finally, there are the honorees of the Medal of Honor. There are five names. General Echeboing, a former minister of ours. Then from the Brazilian Navy, Admiral Ilkis. From CNEN, Wilson Pareji Calvo, superintendent of IPEN. From the academic sector, Carlos Bustos. Beagle, the Director of Service of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging at Radiology Institute of the Clinical Hospital of the School of Medicine of the University of Sao Paulo, and from the industrial sector, Ezio Ribeiro da Silva, Superintendent of Enrichment and Isotopic Research at INB. Thank you very much for this opportunity for the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation to participate. We appreciate the participation of the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation, represented by Major Brigadier Leonidas Giarrojo Medeiros Jr. I would also like to point out that the GSI was going to be represented here by General Augusto Eleno, but at the last minute he had to be called by the president for another uh, event. Anyway, moving on, if today we were going to talk about the Brazilian nuclear industry, it also requires that we talk about all that started back then. In 1951, Admiral Alvaro Alberto da Malta Silva wrote the first nuclear program policy for Brazil and created the National Nuclear Energy Commission. Since 1979, the Navy has been executing its nuclear program and was instrumental in building the Angra dos Reis units. 
To this day, the Navy is involved in the nuclear industry and the Nuclear Electric Generation Laboratory stands out with the purpose of developing technological training in the design, construction, commissioning, operation, and maintenance of the PWR-type nuclear reactors, in addition to the submarine development program, which will allow the construction of the first Brazilian submarine with nuclear propulsion. To talk about these projects and the future of the Navy's relationship with the nuclear sector, Abden invites the General Director of Nuclear and Technological Development of the Navy, Admiral of the Squadron, Marco Sampaio Olsen. But now let's listen to a sponsor. Hello, I'm David Howell, president of the America's operating plant business for the Westinghouse Electric Company. I am honored to be a partner with Brazil and the Brazilian Association for the Development of Nuclear Activities. We are really proud of what the Brazilian nuclear sector has achieved. In particular, the record generation just achieved by Anger Unit 1. Westinghouse has been and continues to be committed to the Brazilian nuclear program. Agri Unit 1 and 2 have done very well from the standpoint of generation over the last few years and continues to support the ever expanding per capita generation needs of the Brazilian government. Westinghouse has partnered with Electronuclear to extend the life of Agri Unit 1 from 40 to 60 years. And just recently, in 2020, signed a contract for the first phase of that extension for the engineering analysis program. We are also working very closely with both the Brazilian and the United States government, including the Export Import Bank, in cooperation and support of that program, as well as others in the future to come. We're also very excited that the Brazilian government is committed to nuclear, not just with the operating fleet that we have today, but the continued completion of Anger Unit 3 and potentially other new builds throughout the country of nuclear. Westinghouse looks forward to collaborating with the Brazilian government on potentially an AP1000 plant, the world's safest Generation 3 plant, or our new microgrid reactor called the Vinci for other applications in Brazil. We are excited about the future of nuclear in Brazil and happy to be a partner with you throughout today and tomorrow. On behalf of ABDEN, we thank the official authorities for their participation in the 2020 event and reiterate our commitment to give visibility to all the initiatives that will support the development of nuclear activities in Brazil. In addition to our ministers, I would also like to thank some distinguished guests here with us today. Ambassador Marcel Beato of the Brazilian Mission to the IAEA, Consul General of the United States in Rio de Janeiro, Scott Hemington, and in his name, I welcome all the members of foreign delegations here today, Admiral Capistrano from the Office of Institutional Security, Secretary of Entrepreneurship and Innovation and of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, Paulo Alvim, Leonam Guimarães, President of Electronuclear, Admiral Ney Zanella dos Santos from the Ministry of Mining and Energy, Director of the Naval Agency for Nuclear Safety and Quality, Rear Admiral Humberto Moraes Ruivo, Antonio Alvarenga from Sebrae, Vice President of Abdan, Sandre Andre Salgado, Vice President of Fremetom Latin America, Ivan Daibov, Mike Dembrak, Vice President of Westinghouse, João Carlos Cunha Bastos, Director of Sales and Operations of Electronuclear, Vice President Vice Admiral Antonio Carlos Suarez Guerreiro, President of Amazul, Dr. Carlos Freddy Moreira, President of INB, and all partner companies working with ABDAN. We also greet Dr. Malasev, as well as all the members of ABDAN's Board of Trustees. I would also like to make a special mention of Sibrai, which in partnership with ABDAN, has developed micro and small sized businesses so that they can become leading suppliers for the nuclear su sector. We will get to know these initiatives closely in the technology and productive chain ar arenas that will be part of our NT2E slated for July 20 2021, and we will be together again, we hope. There are many important people closely following this special edition of NT2E, and before we proceed, we'd like to get to know one more of our sponsors.
Hello. It's a great pleasure for me and an honor as the CEO of Technotom to address you on the inauguration of the Nuclear Trade and Technology Exchange promoted by ABDAN. At Technotom, we have been committed to the development and technology and knowledge transfer toward the Brazilian nuclear sector for more than 40 years. We have been present since the early 80s and participate in the training of the staff at ANGRA Unit 1 and ANGRA Unit 2 and carrying out inspections on both reactors and providing the simulator for the total reach of the ANGRA reactor and always applying the latest technology and relying on a staff of experts from many different nations, including a major presence of Brazilian staff that also supports all of these projects and participates in major projects at the international level. We export technology and knowledge from Brazil. Even sin- ever since 2013, we have a company located in Rio de Janeiro known as Tecnotom do Brasil that has hired up to 100 Brazilian staff members to carry out the refueling work at ANGRA, as well as virtual work for training and continuing education and works on cutting-edge projects like that of LabGen or collaborating with the supply and after-sales service of high-quality equipment for INB or the aeronautic sector. Every year, Technotom carries out its work in many different countries, in practically every country with a nuclear industry. And we are particularly proud of being part of the nuclear industry of a country as wonderful and vital as Brazil is. Getting to know Brazil and working here provides us with the unique opportunity to fuse pride, business, and pleasure all into one. And to wrap up, I would just like to say that Technotom thinks that nuclear energy is absolutely necessary for taking on the climate challenges of today and the future. Brazil is in an enviable international position with 85% of its electricity coming from non-carbon emitting sources of energy. The clear investment in nuclear energy with the guarantee of energy security and efficiency provided by its professionals will always be able to rely on our support and commitment with your industry and sustainability of our planet. I sincerely congratulate all of you for this event and thank you for the opportunity to address you all. Bom dia. All right, it's time. Created in 2017, the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit has been awarded to people who have excelled in the execution of projects that drive the development of the nuclear energy sector in Brazil, an initiative masterminded and carried out by ABDAN during the tenure of Celso Cunha's administration. Now we will finally recognize our awardees for his engagement and work with the Committee for Developing Nuclear Policies, ABDAN awards the, nucle- the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit to Sergio Echegoen in the political category. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I address such a select audience, first of all, to express my gratitude for the profound honor of having been chosen and to receive from Dr. Celso Cunha the order of nuclear merit granted by the Brazilian Association for the Development of Nuclear Activity. Nuclear activity, which has been so forgotten and perhaps even criminally, I would say intentionally, I don't want to say the word criminal, so intentionally forgotten because of ideology, misplaced arguments, the lack of understanding about the greatness of our country and of its nuclear potential. In the Brazilian case, nuclear energy has much more, is much more focused on integration than disintegration or breakup or military disputes. Brazil gave up and renounced at the end of its constitution 
by the sovereign will of those who represented us at that time, the use of nuclear energy for weaponry. But it has a responsibility, the duty to seek nuclear development, nuclear energy for peaceful purposes, which are of so much interest to the Brazilian nation and so important to our people. This goes from the agricultural sector, where Brazil is the second largest producer in the world, to the generation of energy, to the desalination of water in our deserts from regions with water scarcity, to the projection of our maritime sovereignty with the nuclear submarine, and to the sacred right of health care. Today, what we do with the Brazilian population, we, the Brazilian state, do with the Brazilian population by delivering access to resources to address insufficiencies, the access to nuclear resources available worldwide for treatments in health care and for diagnoses, it is a crime that we have not stopped yet. And this is a huge social gap that we mistreat the mass of Brazilian population that does not have access to private health plans. Nuclear energy in Brazil was implemented by a visionary and selfless person Admiral Alvaro Alberto, and continues to this day in the hands of similar people, the selfless, visionary Brazilian scientists, generations that are already reaching older age and are hard to replace, who are persistently leading Brazil in spite of the sad and unfortunate ideological approaches that have turned nuclear energy into something bad, leading in the end to the harm of one aspect, which is nuclear energy for weaponry. I think that finally, for some time, and especially ever since the Temer government which forcibly recognized nuclear energy, this has been uh, taking back, we have been taking back the nuclear program's role as one of the alternatives that society has for powering different activities. And for this reason, we have begun to have more visibility because of the responsibility that we have for the international relationship that we have developed. I pay a very special homage to all Brazilian scientists. I repeat, the selfless, persistent warriors of nuclear activity for peaceful purposes. I pay a very fair and deserved honor or tribute to the sailors of the Brazilian Navy for what they have been doing. Following the exemplary steps of Alvaro Alberto and I once again thank with great humility and honor everyone for this distinction that I have received and that I understand not only as a recognition of my work, but that of an entire group that has made an effort to make nuclear energy a reality and once again occupy its rightful space to that, uh, and that Brazilian society deserves congratulations to everyone and please accept my moving and moved gratitude for this tribute. Well, thank you and congratulations to General Etchegoyen. And now in the history category, Abden awards the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit to Squadron Admiral Ilkis Barbosa Jr., commander of the Brazilian Navy, one of the chiefs responsible for carrying out the submarine development program, also dedicated to building the first Brazilian nuclear propulsion submarine.
by being awarded the 2020 Distinguished Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit, I congratulate the Brazilian Association for the Development of Nuclear Activities, ABDAN, on behalf of its president, engineer, Celso Cunha. Granting this decoration represents recognition for the work done by the Brazilian Navy, as well as for the selfless professionals, both military and civilian, who lend their talents to strengthen the nuclear sector of this force, and by extension, the Brazilian nuclear industry. The Navy has, long, has a long history of contributions to the scientific and technological development of this country. We can cite the nuclear area as an example of this saga that dates back to the time of Admiral Alver, Al, Alvaro Alberto da Mota e Silva. In this context, since the 1970s, the Navy has made efforts to develop the nuclear program and has made significant achievements, such as the construction of a research reactor in partnership with the Institute for Research on Energy and Nuclear Power, and the mastery of the nuclear fuel cycle, and the submarine development program, which aims to construct Brazil's first conventional submarine with nuclear propulsion, in addition to four Riachuelo-class diesel-electric submarines. This requires regular and close interactions with the aforementioned nuclear plan. The progress made leads the way towards the future dual applications with the construction and use of compact modular reactors that enable the qualification of human resources and technological progress that is important for these and several areas, in addition to helping with job creation. The Navy actively participates in the National Multipurpose Reactor Project, as well as in discussions within the Development Committee of the Brazilian Nuclear Program. We are navigating in sync with the nuclear community in the efforts to strengthen this sector. Aware of the importance of science, technology, and innovation for sustainable development and the progress of Brazil, the Navy legitimates the strategic value of the nuclear sector and its potential, contributing to ensure the welfare of Brazilian society and future generations. On behalf of the Brazilian Navy, it is with great satisfaction and honor that I express my profound gratitude to Abdan for the distinction that they bestowed upon me through such an important commendation for this institution, whose value is broadly recognized for its initiatives in integration, dissemination, and development of nuclear activities. Thank you very much. At full sail, all for the homeland. The Medal for Honor for Nuclear Merit in the Research category goes to the Superintendent of the Energy and Nuclear Research Institute, Wilson Aparecido Parejo Calvo. With IPEN, Wilson has been dedicated for years to research applications of nuclear techniques in industry, health, agriculture, and the environment, with emphasis on radioisotopes and ionizing radiation technology. Mr. President of Avdan, Dr. Celso Cunha, I feel honored to be awarded as the Nuclear Doctor of the Brazilian Association for the Development of Nuclear Activities for services rendered in the nuclear area and Brazilian society. I share this merit with the members of IPEM, CNN, CNEN, and NCTI, and all the professionals of the institutions committed to the success of the Brazilian nuclear sector with which we work. In a brief technological overview, I point out technological innovations and accomplishments resulting from the dedication and commitment of the workers and collaborators, students, and the professionals of the renowned partner institutions present in this meeting. 60 years of mastery of the nuclear fuel cycle in Brazil, including 
prospecting, mining, processing, refining, enrichment, manufacture, and the use of fuel elements, including the adequate and safe treatment of radioactive waste, mastery of the technology in the manufacture of fuel and uranium targets for research reactors aiming at the development, innovation, education, technological products and services, and the requirements of nuclear medicine in Brazil. The manufacture and installation of 19 plate type fuel elements as national technology in the research nuclear reactor IPEN MB01, simulating the operation in the core of the RMB, the result partnership with the INB, the CTMSP, CNEN, and the Patria Foundation, Amazul, and IPEN, 3,000 master doctor's uh, degrees granted in the graduate programs for nuclear science and technology at USP IPEN with CAPI's grade of six. The second class of the graduate master's program in health technologies at IPEN, nuclear engineering course from 2021 on at USP's Polytechnical School in partnership with CNEN and IPEN. The plan for the Brazilian multipurpose reactor and its future installation on 2 million square meters that have already been set aside at Ipero, provided by the Brazilian Navy and the government of the state of Sao Paulo and its Office of Economic Development, which will provide expansion and democratization of nuclear medicine in Brazil through the production of radioisotopes and radiopharmaceuticals for health and industry, nuclear fuel radiation tests, and advanced materials, and conducting basic and applied scientific research. I would also like to highlight the expansion of the program for strengthening the nuclear production chain in Brazil, recently presented to the Board of Trustees of ABDAN as the objective of identifying and proposing actions to strengthen the structure to expand and boost innovation and technological development in the nuclear production chain in Brazil with the participation of the governmental institutions, private enterprises, universities, research institutes, nuclear sector associations, among others. Once again, I thank Abdan, represented here by President Dr. Celso Cunha, for the diploma and the medal for nuclear merit. I wish the organizing committee and all participants in the 2020 Nuclear Trade and Technology Exchange and the 2020 World University Brazil great success. Thank you very much. Dr. Carlos Alberto Buspiegel is director of the Service of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging of the Radiology Institute of the Hospital of Clinics of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Sao Paulo. This research center is a leader in the sector and has developed several innovative research projects. For this reason, the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit is given to him. Good afternoon. I would especially like to thank the Board of Abdan on behalf of Dr. Celso Cunha and all its advisory board for the honor I received today. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all the governmental and non-governmental authorities present here today, whom I thank for this special honor. I would like to say a few words about myself and my career on the occasion of receiving this medal. I have been working in the field of nuclear medicine for over three decades. More specifically, I started in 1987 when I finished my medical residency at the University of Sao Paulo's medical school. Since then, I have participated in the training of a significant number of specialists who today work in different hospitals and clinics in Brazil, as well as in some in Latin American countries. I also have worked on making Brazilian nuclear medicine more visible and recognized both in and outside of Brazil 
through the continuous production of science that is published in scientific publications such as journals with a selective editorial policy. I have participated together with other professors at the USPs School of Medicine in the creation of the Center, uh, the Cancer Institute in Sao Paulo, and I serve on its board of directors since its foundation. The Institute has brought excellent quality service both in the diagnosis and treatment of cancer and exclusively for patients in the Brazilian Unified Health System. In other words, the economically vulnerable population, in addition to generating landmark knowledge in the field of oncology. I was also responsible for the planning and implementation of the first cycle in a university hospital in Brazil, which has uh, received countless recognition for its landmark research and teaching uh, in Brazil. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the government officials for all their support to the development of nuclear activities in Brazil. And at this moment, I urge you with all my simplicity and humility that you continue in this process of encouraging the promotion of nuclear activities because we still have a significant proportion of the population without access to the applications of nuclear medicine. This support that the government has lent to companies and agencies that operate in the nuclear field is fundamental so that we can increase the coverage we provide to our population with these technologies, especially the most economically vulnerable. I also thank the National Commission on Nuclear Energy and ANVISA for their efforts to make regulations more practicable and granting greater access to the population and society to this type of specialty medicine without casting aside or weakening the strict criteria of quality and safety that it requires. Finally, I would like to thank you once again for this honor and to take this opportunity to credit all the wonderful people who were there with me and who continue with me to work on this lifetime mission. Thank you very much. In the industry category, Abden awards the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit to the Superintendent of Isotopic Enrichment of Nuclear Industries of Brazil, Ezio Ribeiro da Silva Jr. Besides the work for years at INB in favor of the construction of a nuclear fuel cycle, which qualifies him to receive this honor, Ezio is a figure dear to everyone in the sector, and today we honor him with the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. I am Ezio Ribeiro. I'm a chemist. I graduated from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, and I have a graduate degree in nuclear energy also from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. I would first like to thank Abdan and INB for this beautiful tribute that honors me and makes me very proud. Now, I will tell you a little bit about my story in my professional life. This started in the early 80s when I was working with CTPM and reached out to them to develop my master's thesis. Ever since then, I started as a trainee doing my master's work and soon I was hired. After being hired, I went to Germany where I had the opportunity to specialize in nuclear energy, more specifically in the area of uranium isotope enrichment and uranium uh, technology where I had the opportunity to work with other PhDs and I learned a lot and was able to absorb much of what they were passing on to me. When I returned from Germany, I had the opportunity to transfer to the uh, nuclei. Uh, that's when I went to Resendi. I went to work here at nuclei and help them to implant or implement the uranium enrichment plant. 
1993, I was transferred to INB. I was already an advisor at Nuclebras, so then I was transferred to INB. And from then on, I helped to implement the reconversion plants and the uranium oxide pellets without ever giving up the work of isotopic enrichment. And I divided my time between the implementation of these plants and the preparation for implementing the factory for enrichment and centrifugation in partnership with the CTMSP, the Technological Center of the Navy in Sao Paulo. Ever since then, I have been working on this uh, very activity and making sure that the uranium enrichment plant basically implemented in the first phase. And we still have two more uh, cascades to carry out. And that is what I have been doing to, and helping out with the Brazilian nuclear program. And in the context of the Brazilian nuclear program, I feel very young. And this is the very issue that comes up when we talk about Angra Unit 3. And when we think about the nuclear submarine that we are producing, as well as the Santa Quiteria uranium mine. And soon we're going to see the Brazilian multipurpose reactor that will come to bring commercial uranium enrichment. And these projects have helped to strengthen our field. Thank you. Very well. Thank you to our five winners of the Medal of Honor for Nuclear Merit. Your work is fundamental for our in development. We are almost at the end of our opening ceremony. I am sure that everyone who was connected could feel privileged to hear so many people who are very important to our sector. Remember that this is the opening of a series of panel discussions that you will follow on Thursday, the 12th, on the same platform where you have already registered. We will have participation by renowned people in the sector, such as the president of Electronuclear, Leonam Guimarães, the journalist and economist, economist George Vidor, among other big names. Here, we recognize five people who were awarded the Medal of Nuclear Merit. But they are not the only ones. Let's get to know one of our sponsors. Whoever owns a business knows how valuable time is. That's why Apex Brazil supports Brazilian companies that want to export their products, attract investment, or do business abroad. With Apex Brazil, Brazilian companies get strategic support for shipping their products abroad in a smart and safe way. With innovative methods, partnerships, and smart solutions, market insights, and strategic content, and lots of skill, Apex Brazil is a leader in promoting exports, internationalizing businesses, and attracting foreign investment. The agency also works in coordination with public and private players in strategic sectors, both to make Brazilian companies more competitive and for bolstering the Brazilian economy. If what your company is looking for is a connection to the world of opportunities in the international market, then what it needs is the support of Apex Brazil. Access the world. Access Apex Brazil. We had five people who were recognized with the Medal of Honor, but they are not the only ones to be honored tonight. Now, for... The contribution made in developing the partnership between ABDAN and the World Nuclear Association in recent years, I make an honorable mention to, and give the floor to the former president of WNA, Agneta Rising. But before that, I'd like to remind you that you can turn on the simultaneous interpretation with the icon of a globe down at the bottom part of your screen. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be here to this event. Of course, not really there, because I'm only on the screen. And uh, I'm in London, and it's, of course, late evening here. 
I would like to take this opportunity to uh, take uh, to thank Abdan and its members for the work they have done to uh, to move nuclear forward in Brazil, as well as uh, promoting nuclear energy. And also, of course, for the cooperation with the World Nuclear Association. We are really happy to cooperate with Abdan and all its members. It feels like it was only yesterday that we met in Rio de Janeiro for the World Nuclear Spotlight Brazil, when the global nuclear industry and Brazilian decision makers came together to discuss the great potential for nuclear developments in Brazil. And at that time, it was a great honor to meet uh, Minister Bento Albuquerque. And uh, this is, of course, a pleasure again to meet high level people in, in Brazil today. The World Nuclear University plays a key role in educating the future leaders for the nuclear industry. And I'm the president of the World Nuclear University, and I'm really delighted that we will be hosting the World Nuclear University, the WNU short course, World Nuclear Industry Today in Brazil in next week. The world needs countries like Brazil, such as Brazil, with a long history of and a great experience in nuclear energy to step up and lead the way by expanding their nuclear capacity to help contribute to sustainable energy future. We need to have electricity for more people. We need to have electricity in more places and also in many more uses. And this is what nuclear energy can do. As things are now, nuclear is respected, but not wanted. Nuclear power will continue to play a key role in bringing affordable electricity around the world and is an essential part of the climate change solution. However, nuclear is still not allowed to be part of the conversation in some places. Even if the IEA, several United Nations bodies and the OECD are more urgently emphasizing the importance of nuclear. And however, the picture is now changing, thanks in large part to the vision that the world nuclear industry, world nuclear industry with, a, with the support of World Nuclear Association has provided by putting a goal for the future. And that is that 25% of the global electricity should come from nuclear power before 2050. People are coming to the nuclear family wanting nuclear energy to meet their needs and power their dreams and aspirations. We need to change the image of the industry, both outside and inside the industry itself. And so I'm especially proud of the outcome of the Harmony Goal, which has been seized upon by the nuclear industry, as well as being a reference for policymakers. Over the last few years, there have been more and more discussions around cost, cost, and cost, despite the fact that nuclear is the most cost-effective energy source for the society. However, again, we need to ask ourselves, if we build short-term solutions like solar panels and wind turbines, which are not effective for the societal system, what will happen to the system itself? They are small scale and cannot resolve the large scale needs we have. Solar and wind are by nature very dispersed and they are everywhere, everywhere, but they are dispersed and the form of energy is dispersed and which makes it more costly to harvest and it cannot be stored easily. Hydropower is clearly a much more efficient energy source as the raindrops are concentrated into streams and rivers by nature. Being the most concentrated energy form, nuclear is the most intelligent way to generate electricity and other services as well. We achieve huge output from nuclear with very little input. Renewable energy is like a bicycle. It can take you places 
and can play a role. However, it also has limitations. It is impossible to build an advanced society based on bicycles. For that task, you will need nuclear, or to follow the transport metaphor, railways, where you can transport huge amounts, but for a small effort. This is how we build a stronger tomorrow, by ensuring that we use the most efficient, most intelligent energy system that are currently available to us. In many ways, the future of nuclear energy is much brighter than it has been for a long period. We are ever more re recognized and valued for the unique services that nuclear energy offers humanity. I'm convinced that countries like Brazil will have a key role to play, highlighting that economic prosperity and sustainable development can be delivered hand in hand because we can do this with the help of the atom. Again, it's a great honor for me to be here in the opening of the WNU short course in Brazil. We thank the words of the former president of World Nuclear Association and also the work dedicated to the development of the sector. In addition to Agnetha Rising, we will also make an honorable mention to another person who has done extraordinary job in front or at the head of the World Nuclear University and in a very harmonious way over the past 10 years and has developed the relationship between WNU and ABDAN. I would like to pass the word or the floor on to the former president of WNU, Patricia Wieland. Good afternoon to all. Thank you, Maria Clara. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you and all the participants at the NTUTE. Congratulations, first of all, to all of those who have been awarded with the Medal of Honor. I can't applaud you very well right now, but I'd like to do that for each of you. Just a small correction, I was the head of Nuclear World Nuclear uh, University, but the president was always Agnetha because she was the general director of WNA. It's a very special day. November, for, to me, is a very special month. In fact, tomorrow is the 39th anniversary that I started working here. And this was at the Institute for Nuclear Engineering. I remember when I went there, I was welcomed by Dr. Abel, who was the director of the Institute. And he welcomed me and introduced me to all the heads of the departments and took me to the most important laboratories of IN. And that really had a major impact on me. I felt part of the team. I felt honored to be there. And it was uh, very important for me the way I was treated at that first meeting. And over all these years, I still feel this way. It's one of the feelings that I f have is as if I'm always starting a partic again, especially on my return to Brazil. The Brazilian scene has changed a lot since then in 1981 to now, but I still feel like I'm here, part of the team, and working with you together, strong. Uh, of course, I don't miss everything, like the, the traffic jams, but I do definitely like being able to contribute to my job. Now, there's something that's very important that's happened over these decades, and it's change. There's always going to be change, no matter whether it's in the process or in a department or in a city or in a country or throughout the world or in the world or in the climate. There will always be change. And the companies that uh, adapt and observe these changes, they're the ones that are going to be able to grow. The search for decarbonization and the circular economy that is so much talked about and that everybody will have to adapt to, the search for efficiency, quality, and safety counts today as a digital technology, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, and of course, the nuclear sector. It works in the past decades around innovation. Brazil, as has been mentioned several times today, is a leader, and in many ways, it is an innovator and an implementer. It will deliver the patent and go beyond and provide benefits. 
Brazil is stand, stands out in the startup world. We already have 11 unicorns this year, for example. This is something that you couldn't have even imagined a few years ago. And so Brazil's just at the beginning. And this is certainly going to attract more investment in all fields. I was very grateful for uh, Celso Cunha's leadership at Abden and everything that they are doing to drive all these advances and progress that we've seen in the last, uh, in recent times. All the ministries that are here too, it's great to see their support. And I'm very pleased that Minister Bento was here and presented the idea of having a nuclear cluster. I think it's an excellent idea. Brazil is a leader and can collaborate a lot with other countries, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, in the South-South collaboration. Finally, and I follow the development of other nuclear programs in other countries, in Africa, for example, and I'm curious to see the major changes that are going to be happening on the international market stage. I'm pretty sure that we're going to see some surprises there. And everybody who's collaborating here is going to be proud of Brazil's leadership. I have the honor now of being part of the ABDAM Board of Trustees. And also, I can say that all the progress that we've seen, particularly in the initiative to make a strong collaboration with the IAEA in several areas, particularly this means that these are areas that bring us the chance to be very important and bring benefit to Brazilians and in the supply chain. Several other initiatives in progress are of paramount importance. For example, in the technological arena that you will see during the WNU, and this is certainly going to bring more motivation and talent to our area, the nuclear area. Well, I wish Abden a lot of success, WNU as well, in these events. Congratulations, Abden, and to the sponsors. This spectacular platform, which is easy to navigate and very attractive. I've never seen anything quite like it. I think Brazil really went all the way and is uh, really hit the mark and made history. And I'm sure that we're going to take the next step. And I want to next time put my avatar right there so that I can interact with all of you in a more advanced way. In any case, I hope to continue working in the nuclear area with the goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainability and build with you opportunities for collaboration, knowledge, and innovation. Thank you all very much. We thank you, uh, Patricia Williand. And that was our last uh, show for this ceremony. Now we're going to keep on working together on Thursday. And I also want to let you know that next week, we will be having the WNU short courses on World Nuclear University, and that will be on November 17th and 19th. And we will have debates that you don't want to miss. To access these lectures, you first need to uh, enter using the same link you used to join this ceremony. In the central area of the virtual hall, you'll see panels. By clicking there, you will be able to open an agenda for the event with a link to all the meetings and just request access to the link. Now, I welcome Celso back to the studio so that we can officially close this evening. Come on, Celso. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm going to give you the floor over to you. Okay, well, I only have one word to say right now, which is this moment. It's happiness. Happiness to re uh, to see all my friends again and to be together here and happiness that everyone is doing well during this pandemic. And we have the clarity to know that we are here to build this new market together, this market for uranium, this market where we are supporting and advance above all. 
I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, all of our partners, and all the associates at Abden. Thank you all, and good evening, Maria Clara. Please come here, and let's say ciao to close this wonderful evening. Yes, and I'd just like to remind all of you to enter this hall with the different expositions from our sponsors, which is very cool. And I'd also like to thank you, Celso, and thank you all who have been here with us tonight. This is just the beginning of an event that is unforgettable. I wish you all a great evening and see you next time. Have a good one. Take care. Ciao.